My name is Tom Deutsch with Aircraft Training Services. We have been offering uh, strictly PA-46 instruction for the last 35 years. And in that time period, we've conducted approximately 1,350 uh, initial and recurrent classes in the PA-46. The topic I want to talk about this morning is the runway excursion issue in the, uh, the entire line of PA-46. We've had way too many uh, runway excursions in this aircraft for the number of aircraft that are in the, in the fleet. And this is many times the result. Now the turbines, the uh, Meridians, the M500s, M600s, seem to be the worst offenders. However, all the PA46 line uh, is problematic in this area. This is a, an example of a Mirage that had a runway excursion and a subsequent nose gear collapse. And here's a Matrix. This uh, Matrix had a nose wheel collapse. It ended up on the runway, but you can see back here by the marks with the landing gear, it had wandered off the runway or excur excursion off the runway and the nose gear collapsed as it came back onto the runway or dug into the mud, I'm not sure which. First, I want to clear up a couple of misunderstandings about these nose wheel collapses. Some have said that it's due to a weak nose gear on the PA-46 and that the nose gear collapses and then the excursion happens. Others have said it's poor pilot technique. Neither one of those are entirely true. What happens is we have an excursion off the runway, a veering off of the runway, and then when it gets off into the grass or the soft mud or, or hits the asphalt, uh, lip of the asphalt coming back onto the runway, the nose gear collapses. As far as poor piloting technique, there's some training that we can do to, to help this situation and needs to be done by us instructors, but by and large, it's not poor pilot piloting ability. First of all, I want to run through the design and the operation of the nose gear and show you exactly what, what's going on here. This is a diagram of the nose gear system, which is virtually the same in all PA-46 aircraft. And what we have here is, beginning back here, you have your, your rudder pedals, your four rudder pedals inside the cockpit. Okay, They are attached by these two rods here. They come through the pressure bulkhead. These are pressure bulkhead uh, boots to uh, a, a steering bell crank, a rudder steering bell crank. That bell crank is attached to what we call a steering, I'll call a steering rod, okay? And it goes through a, a canister, a, a steering bungee canister, where there's a spring in there to dampen out uh, defects in the taxiway or the runway as you're taxing. Uh, that spring helps to dampen that out. Well, that arm is then attached to, or that rod is attached to what we call the steering arm. The steering arm pushes against two nylon rollers that are attached to the steering horn. The steering horn then is attached through three bolts to the trunnion, the nose gear trunnion, which runs down through the housing and steers the nose wheel, uh, giving you basically a positive control steering through your rudder pedals. I'm going to show you some pictures of this. You also, I don't want to, I don't want to miss the fact that on your rudder pedal bar back here, you have cables that go back to the rudder. So you have basically positive control between the rudder and the nose wheel through a series of, of, of rods and cables. I'll give you some pictures here of what this is actually what, what it actually looks like. This is a nose gear assembly out of a Meridian. And you can see right here is the pivot point that attaches to the engine mount. And above the pivot point are the rollers, the two nylon rollers on the steering horn. And uh, it's important that you remember from this picture, what you remember from this picture is that the attach point is below the rollers. So that when the landing gear is retracted, okay, it retracts back in this case, you can see where the rollers move forward as it pivots on the engine mount. This is uh, kind of important to remember here in just a moment. This is a picture where we're laying on our back and looking at the rear part of the nose wheel uh, well. 
the uh, nose gear well. This is the pressure bulkhead right here. Right behind it here is the rudder pedals. And these are those boots that, that uh, uh, maintain the pressure in the uh, pressure vessel. Here's the steering bell crank, pivots right here on this bolt. When you push on one rudder or the co-pilot's uh, opposite rudder, you move this bell crank back and forth, which is attached to this bar running on up to the steering bar. Going through, this is that, uh, that uh, bungee can uh, canister with the spring inside. Okay, if I turn around and look the other direction, this is what I see. And we've got the, the bell crank, the rudder bell crank, the steering rod going through the canister and you can see the bar just barely see the bar comes on up here all the way up and attaches to the steering bar right here which pushes on the nylon rollers right here of the steering uh, horn on the top of the of the uh, trunnion looking down this this aircraft the engine was out so i took advantage to look down at this system and again you have the steering rod, which right here it is, it goes all the way back to the rudder pedals, pivots this bell crank, or, or we'll call it, it's really called a steering bar, pivots on this bolt and pushes on one or the other of the nylon rollers, which turns the whole trunnion down to the tire. And that's what gives you your steering on the ground. This is what it looks like in a fully assembled airplane. I believe this is a Meridian, or it could be a Mirage, but I believe it, it, it's a Meridian. And you can see here's the, the, the steering bar pushing against the rollers that turn the steering horn, and it comes on down and transmits down to the wheel. In October 15th of 2021, Piper came out with a service letter entitled Maintenance Alert, this, is their, this was their third or fourth rendition of this letter. And this letter gives you all the specifications you need to rig the nose gear speed, to rig the nose gear steering and rudder cable assembly in the PA-46 to exact factory specs. What I'm gonna do is talk about two of the main reasons we have runway excursions. Uh, they're kind of tied together and I'm going to uh, brief you on both of them. This is a drawing, an engineering drawing, of the top of the steering horn, I'm sorry, the steering horn and the steering bar and the two rollers looking down towards the nose tire. And you can see where it pushes against the, uh, the, the steering bar pushes against the steering horn via those two rollers. The steering horn then is attached to the nose wheel trunnion. Here's the the uh, bar going back to the rudder pedals that causes the, the motion. This is a, a close-up picture, again, of the, of the aircraft without an engine. And here's the steering uh, arm going back, a rod going back to the rudder pedals, the steering arm, and the steering horn, and the two rollers. What I'd like you to notice in this picture is how tight the rollers are against the steering bar. The specifications called out in the uh, maintenance manual is that there should be no more than ten thousandths of an inch on either side of the, uh, the gap on either side right here at this point. Ten thousandths of an inch is the average uh, thickness of the average business card would be ten thousandths of an inch. This is the drawing out of the maintenance manual. Actually it's out of that service letter that I just showed you and uh, this drawing will show you the pivot point where the attachment to the, the uh, engine frame, engine mount frame, is right here, and the rollers and the steering bar and all are right here. So as this nose wheel retracts and it pivots around that attach point, you can see the rollers pivot forward. Now, two specifications, two things we're going to talk about. Is this roller gap, the drawing I just showed you? The roller gap right here needs to be no more than ten thousandths of an inch. That's displayed right here. The other thing that I want to point out is that the rake angle of the nose gear itself is to be 90 degrees to the bottom skin. In fact, I'll read from a, uh, this is a uh, rigging and maintenance letter sent to uh, PA46 owners, and it is dated. March of 2008. 
March of 2008. I'll read you uh, what it says about this angle. The proper nose gear rake angle for all Malibu models is zero to one half degree forward of vertical. Okay, zero to one half degree forward of vertical. Measured using the bottom skin of the airframe behind the nose gear doors with the aircraft on jacks. It's important that you have the aircraft on jacks when you measure this. In other words, the relative angle between the belly skin and the nose gear strut should range from 90 degrees to 90.5 degrees. That's spelled out right here, 90 to 90.5 and minus zero. You have zero tolerance for a rake angle behind 90 degrees. Goes on to say, a rake angle outside of this range may result in dynamic instability, creating steering forces that exceed the pilot's ability to control. That last statement's a very important statement, and we're going to get into why it, it would exceed your ability to control your steering and cause a runway excursion, possible loss of control of the aircraft, uh, and a nose uh, resulting in a nose wheel collapse. Why it would be in, so important if you were out of this specification right here, particularly in the negative side. Here's a picture from Piper. They sent out graphically showing what I was talking about where the, the nose gear needs to be 90 degrees to the bottom skin, uh, actually back here behind the gear doors. This is a, a, an M600 accident that happened down in Olive Branch, Mississippi a couple of years ago. I think it was in 2021 that this happened at the beginning of the year. You can see by the skid marks, all three landing gear are, are down until we get off the runway and right there the nose gear dug in and collapsed and this was the result. Well, the NTSB got interested in this event and they took it on in an investigation. And a year or a little more later, they came out with their final investigative report. I would highly recommend you get a copy of this. You can stop the video and take this number down. Get a copy of this and read it carefully. There's a lot of good information in the report on this particular uh, incident. I'm going to describe to you a little bit of what the report had to say, but again, if you read it in depth, it will uh, give you the full story. Let's talk about stability for a moment. We have three types of stability going on here in, in, in the PA-46. You have neutral stability. If you take a ball bearing and place it on a perfectly level surface, that's neutral stability. If I were to push that, that ball bearing, it would roll a little bit, stop, and come to rest wherever it stopped. That's called neutral stability. A positive stability, airplanes are designed to be positively stable. If you bump the elevator in flight or the ailerons in flight, eventually they will return to a stable uh, situation. Just like a ball bearing sitting in a, in, a, in a salad bowl. You push that ball bearing one way or the other, it's going to roll back and forth, but it'll eventually end up right where it started. That's called positive uh, stability. And we have negative stability. Negative stability would be if I took that salad bowl, turn it upside down, put the ball bearing up on top, and I gave it a little shove, it's going to go faster, 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 and never will come back. That's a situation of negative stability. This is what happens in a runway excursion right here. I'll explain here more. These are three drawings of three different nose wheel scenarios. Okay, This one is perfectly ver vertical in the steering axis. In other words, the steering axis and the tire contact patch with the runway, the asphalt or the concrete, are perfectly vertical with each other. Right through the center of the axle and down uh, to the uh, contact point of the patch of the tire. Number, uh, scenario B, we tilt the nose gear forward, okay, so that now the steering axis is ahead of the vertical 
point through the axle to the contact point on the runway, uh, resulting in a stable uh, situation, dynamically stable. If you had a, a nose gear that looked like this and you, you jiggled it one way or the other, the nose gear, because of this friction right here, would be self-centering. This is why Piper says 90 degrees plus a half a degree, negative no degrees, okay? This is a little exaggeration. This is much more than a half a degree, but that's the same principle. Now, if you have a scenario like C, this is an example of a trailing link landing gear. A trailing link landing gear, you've actually increased the distance that the contact point falls behind the vertical uh, rotation of the steering, the steering axis. It's even got a bigger distance here than it does here. It's even more stable. And it, this wheel will self-center. Anytime it's kicked off one way or the other, it'll self-center. Kind of like the front wheel of a shopping cart. You can, if, if you shove it one way or the other, but keep pushing, it will self-center. Okay? Your PA46s all have what we call a neutral, stable situation if they're rigged properly. Basically, neutral, stable. This will not necessarily self-center, but it won't necessarily veer off-center in a um, uh, negative stability situation, okay? Take a bicycle. Let's look at a bicycle. Notice how they've canted the, the axis, uh, the steering axis is well ahead of vertical, the contact point of the tire. The steering axis hits the ground out here, the contact point of the tire is back here, you have a stable situation. Imagine what would happen if the, the fork on this bicycle was tilted back and you went to turn that bicycle. It would just continue to turn. That would be negatively stable, a negative stable bicycle. Now let's make it worse. How about the big old heavy engine we have up on top of our nose gear? Remember when you were a kid, you took a friend, you set him on the handlebars, he put his feet down here on the axle and you gave him a ride. Or maybe you were the friend up there riding. I don't know, I was never quite that brave. Imagine if you had somebody up there and now we had a reverse or a negative angle on the fork and you went to turn, it would be next impossible for you to recover back with that heavy engine up here on top of your handlebars and you would continue to go over and both of you would uh, end up on the ground. Okay? Well, that's what happens with a out-of-rig nose gear on a PA46. This is an example of a forward-facing nose gear. You can see your motion is forward here. When it gets bumped back out of rig uh, in a rear uh, negative trail situation. This is exaggerated, but let's just say you're back a degree. Let's say you get bumped back to 89 degrees. It's the same effect. You now have a negative stable situation. Also, I want to point out that because the nose gear pivots here on the um, engine mount, let's say, look how far away the rollers have gotten from the steering horn when that happens. So now you've opened up the gap in the rollers and you've created a negative stability situation on the landing gear. Here's a picture of a roller gap that's opened up. You don't want to adjust that bar forward or aft to tighten up the gap, say in this, this gentleman's airplane, until you've checked that he's at the right rake angle. Otherwise, you could close that gap on a gear that's, that's got a negative rake angle and his situation doesn't get much better. You've just kept him from being able to adjust it forward to where it belongs. On a pre-flight, how do we check that our nose gear is in a proper angle and that the roller gap is closed the way it should be? It's next to impossible to check the rake angle. That's something the mechanic has to do when the airplane's jacked up on, the, on the jacks. However, 
there's a very easy way on a pre-flight to check to see if the roller gap is, is uh, proper. Here's a, here's a rudder. You go back on your pre-flight on the rudder. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take two fingers and I'm going to move this rudder. Look how much play that rudder has. Over an inch, probably close to an inch and a half of play before it even hits the bungee spring. I'm just moving it with fingers. I'm not putting any pressure on it, okay, against the bungee spring. That tells me that we have a pretty significant roller gap in this particular airplane. Well, that can be caused by the nose gear being in a negative rake situation or just that the roller, rollers are not properly adjusted. Here, here's what we have. See that gap in there? That gap is almost a quarter of an inch, a long ways from uh, ten thousandths. Okay? And when we move the rudder, this is what we see. Now you can imagine going down the runway 75, 80 knots, that could cause an issue. Here is the issue. This airplane was up on jacks and and uh, it had loose rollers. wasn't the same airplane we just looked at, but another one similar. And you can see what, what's going on here. A lot of play in that nose wheel. Again, was it because he had a negative rake angle, or was it because the rollers were not adjusted properly? We don't know. The mechanic has to check that. Well, Piper solved the problem, finally, after several years. They solved the problem on the M600 serial number 200 and above. And uh, this, uh, this all came out with the investigation that, uh, that NTSB did. And here's how they solved the situation. This is an M600 gear, later than number uh, 200. And you can see the fork here. Actually, let me go back and show you this. See how this fork is perfectly straight and perfectly um, uh, uh, vertical to the, to the gear itself? Well, on the M600, they still have a vertical rake, uh, 90 degree, 90.5 degree rake, but notice how they canted the, the, uh, fork, the uh, nose wheel fork uh, backwards. They went back a half an inch from the vertical of the nose gear to the center of the axle, they went back a half an inch. And in effect, that gave them the same as canting the nose gear forward five degrees. Not just a half a degree as they want in the other models, but five degrees. It basically is a trailing link nose gear. Now all of a sudden, you have a self-centering nose wheel that's dynamically stable. Okay? And uh, it's actually less of an issue if your roller gap opens up on this because this is like a shopping cart wheel. It will self-center. Now you're going to get a little shimmy maybe or whatever, but you're not going to get this back and forth excursion ending off the runway and a loss of control. So that's the, the M600. Unfortunately, I don't believe there's any way to do this on the previous models. You can, on the previous PA46 models. Now I understand they have a kit for the previous uh, to serial number 200 on the M600 that you can install. Uh, it's, it's not cheap, but uh, I know Kevin Mead over at Mead Aircraft Services is installing one, I believe, at the present time that uh, I'm making this video. So it can be installed on the M600, but not yet on the other models. Okay, let's talk about ways that uh, we can, as pilots, can help avoid a runway excursion and possible uh, loss of control. First and foremost, be sure that the nose gear tire and the rudder cable tensions are all within factory specifications and that your weight and balance is within limits. The geometry of the airplane, uh, it really needs to have the weight and balance within limits so that once an, for some reason an excursion starts, it doesn't add to the instability of the airplane. Second, Center the rudder trim on final approach, most important on the piston models. So why is it most important? Because the piston models have a rudder bias where they're pushing against the rudder pedals to trim the rudder. Where on the, the uh, uh, turbine models, they have an actual rudder trim on the rudder. It's strictly aerodynamic and it doesn't have the same effect as it does on the, uh, 
on the piston models. However, it's important on all of them. Number three, be sure the yaw dampener is off prior to final. Depress the red button on the control yoke and confirm that it is off. That's important. You don't want to land um, with the yaw dampener on. What we're talking about here is items that can start an excursion process. Once it's started, if you are out of spec, either rake angle and or roller gap, it just gets worse and worse and worse. We're trying to start, stop it from happening in the first place. Number four, check that both brake pedals are solid before touchdown. This is important because your, your, each rudder pedal has a master cylinder attached to it, and as the O-rings in those master cylinders wear over time, your pressurized vessel will actually pump air into the master cylinder, pumping the, the brake fluid back into the reservoir up in the baggage compartment. Thus, you have a brake line full of air instead of hydraulic fluid. When you touch down, you go to hit both brakes, either to make a quick turnoff or a short runway situation or whatever, and one goes to the floor, one solid, because they're totally separate systems, and guess which way you're going to veer. So, what I'm talking about here is things that begin the process of an excursion and how we can avoid that process. Number five, release any crosswind use of the rudder before the nose wheel touches down. In other words, you're holding a crosswind, say right rudder, or I'm sorry, right aileron, left rudder into a right hand crosswind. The moment you touch on the mains, in, a, in the split second before the nose wheel touches down, just center your rudders. Okay, you can do that by feel. You don't have to look down there. You don't have time to look down at your rudders. Just feel that both feet are, uh, are even. And always center that, that, uh, the rudders before the nose wheel touches, touches down. Land in a full stall situation, holding the nose off, wheels off as long as possible. Weight in the rear baggage compartment can help. Now, let's talk about things that we can do as pilots if an excursion process begins. Okay? If an excursion begins to occur, hold the yoke full aft and apply moderate pressure to both brakes while using the rudder pedals to align the aircraft's path with the runway center line. There's two reasons I say to add light or moderate braking. Reason number one is you're putting drag on the main gear and if you're dragging both main gear equally, it can't, they can't move independently as easily. And Obviously, in an excursion situation, your gear, your main gear are going back and forth uh, somewhat. So, both brakes will dampen that. The second reason for adding moderate braking is you're slowing the aircraft down. The slower the aircraft goes, the less pronounced the excursion process becomes, and the more control you have over the aircraft. So, this is kind of important if the excursion begins to pull the yoke back, Add moderate braking to both rudder pedals. Fly the airplane all the way to the taxiway. Don't relax until the aircraft is stopped. That's important. Don't, don't get complacent and land the airplane and then just, we're on the ground and just relax. That's when trouble can occur. I want to say a couple of things here at the end about uh, uh, inexperienced aircraft mechanics, PA-46 mechanics. Visit with your mechanic just like you do your physician. You are in charge of your aircraft's maintenance, not your mechanic. Somebody has to be the captain in charge, and that's you. Question your mechanic. Has he, is he familiar with this service bulletin 1286 Delta? Has he used it? Did he use it on your plane at annual? Ask him these questions. You're the one that's flying this airplane. If you don't get the answer from your mechanic that, that satisfies your questions, you probably have the wrong shop. And I highly recommend that your PA-46 be maintained at a, at a shop experienced in that aircraft. Well, I hope this video helped. I hope it, it keeps somebody from having an excursion, losing control, collapsing a nose wheel. Uh, that's the goal, and uh, 
Uh, again, if, if you want to contact me at all via uh, my phone, my cell phone, that's the number there. I'd be glad to discuss this further with you. I wish you all safe flying and no runway excursions. Thank you for watching.